Hi, the Dapper Dinosaur here. If you're watching this channel, then you probably know I'm a fan of dinosaurs. The kind of fan who could wow even an eight-year-old boy with my knowledge of the animals. However, I'm also a big fan of those Mesozoic menaces of the sky known to most people as pterodactyls, and to paleontologists as pterosaurs. As you may or may not know, for years Kent Hovind has claimed that dinosaurs are lizards, a claim I think was superbly put down by Aaron Ra, link in the description. However, I saw Kent also describe Quetzalcoatlus, a pterosaur, as a bird. I'll give Kent this. He's not as wrong about this as he is about dinosaurs being lizards, but he's still extremely wrong. His dinosaurs are lizards mistake is about as bad as saying the Earth is flat and the center of the universe, but saying that pterosaurs are birds is more like saying the Earth is a globe at the center of the universe. Both are wrong, but one is way more wrong than the other. So what do we know about pterosaurs? Well, you probably know them from movies and video games, where they often snatch people from the ground with their feet and generally act like overall jerks to the protagonists. It turns out, though, that most media depictions get them way wrong. Most obviously, all, or virtually all, pterosaurs were covered in a feather-like fuzz called pycnofibers. If you saw one alive today, you'd probably describe it as furry. Less obvious is the fact that the media usually gets behavior badly wrong. Pterosaur feet could not carry prey, especially not prey as large as a human. There is no indication that they used their feet for anything but terrestrial locomotion. In fact, as we'll get into later, it appears that their feet weren't even strong enough to be used in launching the animals into the air to take flight. Rather, the extraordinarily robust forelimbs were used for this. Okay, well that's what we get wrong about them. But what are they? Our story starts at the same place as Ken's lizard dinosaur confusion starts. At Diapsida, or what we traditionally think of as reptiles plus birds. The first major division inside Diapsida is between archosaurs and lepidosaurs. Lizards are lepidosaurs. Dinosaurs, pterosaurs, phytosaurs, adosaurs, along with others, are all archosaurs. The distinguishing characteristic of archosaurs is having an extra hole in the skull, called the antorbital fenestra. Ant for before, orbit meaning eye socket, and fenestra from the Latin word for window. Within Archosauria is another major division between Kurotarsalians, like crocodiles, and Avimetatarsalia, or Ornithodira, the group where we find both dinosaurs and pterosaurs, who are essentially sister groups. So a pterosaur, barring some dinosauromorphs, is the closest thing to a dinosaur, but it's not one. This is important because birds are dinosaurs in the same way that humans are mammals. Now, let's hear what Kent has to say. There was another one, uh, the Quetzalcoatlus, huge, the, the dinosaur-eating bird, the Quetzalcoatlus. When it was first named as a new species in 1975, scientists estimated the largest Quetzalcoatlus fossils came from an individual with a wingspan as large as 52 feet. That's a pretty big bird. Yes, Kent, it is big, but it's not a bird. Although, I do appreciate that the picture is one of the Quetzalcoatlus mounts from the Houston Museum of Natural Science in Houston, Texas, a mount I got to see a few months ago in person. As you can imagine, a dinosaur visiting the museum in person was quite a big event for them. But I managed to get a good look at their paleontology wing. And it would walk on its elbows. How many saw the movie, um, what's the one where the guy's paralyzed, but he gets in this chamber and he goes back, he becomes a half-human, half-something. Oh, come on. It was a big movie a couple of years ago. What? Jeff Goldblum? No, it was uh, half science fiction. Avatar. Avatar, yeah. Avatar. They would ride those things. They walk around on their elbows, you know, the big, huge birds like that. They called it the dinosaur eating bird. 52 foot wingspan. Well, I'm not going to comment on the fictional anatomy of an alien species, but I can tell you one thing, Kent. Neither pterosaurs nor birds walk on their elbows. Birds are entirely bipedal on the ground, using their hind limbs for walking and not putting any weight on their wings while walking. Further, what you're looking at on that Quetzalcoatlus is not its elbows. Those are its knuckles. Okay, anatomy time. This is a skeleton of Hatsagopteryx. It's not the same genus as Quetzalcoatlus, but it's very similar. Think of how a fox and a wolf are similar. Despite some differences, they are the sort of thing that even Kent would recognize as being related. This is the animal's humerus. It corresponds to your upper arm. These bones are the animal's radius and ulna. Those bones are the same as the ones in your lower arm. 
So this area here is the elbow. So here we have the wrist, and as you can see, the pteroid bone, a bone unique to pterosaurs, and not found at all in any other animals, least of all birds, Kent. Next, we have a metacarpal. In this case, it's the digit four metacarpal. Although this model does not include them, in life, there would have been extremely thin metacarpals for digits one, two, and three on here as well, before we get to the actual digits. Metacarpals are the same bones as the one in your hand. There's one for each finger. Now we're on to digits. The first three are fairly ordinary, but number four is obviously hugely enlarged. You see, all flying tetrapods, i.e. pterosaurs, birds, and bats, use their forelimbs for flight, but each group does so in a different way. In bats, all five digits are incorporated into a leathery skin membrane stretched between the fingers, which are all enlarged to support this flight membrane. In birds, digits one, two, and three, or two, three, and four, it's a bit unclear at this point, even to scientists, are fused and mount feathers, which themselves form the primary flight surface, rather than a flap of skin like in bats. In pterosaurs, however, digit four is hugely enlarged and supports a flight membrane composed of complex layers of skin, muscle, and other kinds of connective tissue. What Kent thinks is an elbow is in fact the creature's knuckles. Well, that's about all Kent had to say about it. But what are some other ways that we know that pterosaurs aren't birds? Well, in birds, the metatarsal bones, that is the foot bones, are fused into a single bone called the tarsometatarsus. Pterosaurs retain one metatarsal bone per toe. Further, while birds walk on their toes like a T-Rex or a dog, pterosaurs walk on their heels like a human, a bear, or an alligator. Additionally, let's look at the hip bones of pterosaurs and birds. While birds have a rear-pointing wedge-like pubis and ischium, those bones in pterosaurs form sort of an arch. Additionally, pterosaurs have another unique bone in the hip called the prepubis bone. Further, in one of the ways we know that birds are dinosaurs, birds have an open acetabulum. That is, the part of the hip where the humerus goes into the hip is an open hole in birds, whereas in pterosaurs, it's a socket of bone. I can give the Bible a pass on calling bats birds in Leviticus 11, since it was written by and for people who had neither the knowledge nor the time or expertise to gain the knowledge that bats are mammals, or even really what mammals are. But Kent is a man who claims to be an expert on dinosaurs and to be an educator on the subject. Clearly, he's wrong about this, too just like virtually everything else he says. Kent, if you see this, please correct yourself, or failing that, come debate me on whether dinosaurs are lizards or on whether pterosaurs are birds or not, or whether birds are dinosaurs. You probably don't remember it, but the one time we spoke, I was nothing but friendly to you, even though I do think virtually everything you say about science is wrong. If you're not Kent, but you're watching this, thank you. And if so, please hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. It really does help with exposure of my videos if you do any or all of those things. Until next time, I'm the Dapper Dinosaur.